I'm not trying to discourage you. No, wait. Yes, I am. You know what? Yes, I am. I am trying to discourage the people who would just quit. Because if you quit it easily, this is not for you. Hey, welcome to this channel. Today I'm doing a video that's a little different because I'm going to talk about how I ended up quitting my job as a teacher in a school, an elementary school, and uh, launching this channel and my business so that I could work completely from home. Something I should tell you is that if you think or if you have this idea that this will be it easier than your current job, that um, that you're going to make more money quickly, um, maybe this is not the video for you. Uh, I've learned now after doing this that anything that's built to last is built with a lot of time and care put into it. So if you, from my experience, if you really want this to last, if you want to build something that is going to sustain you and bring value to people, it's going to take a lot of time. And this is not the video where I'm going to tell you to quit your job tomorrow and just go like fully into this and use the fear to help propel you. This is not that video. So um, if that's where you're at, maybe um, this is not going to be for you. Okay, if you're still here, I'm really excited about that because that means that you have realistic expectations coming into this and I can really work with that. So um, step number one that I did is that I started with what I had. The first videos on my channel were filmed on an iPhone 4S without lights. I just used uh, morning light. I filmed by a window and I put my phone on a selfie, uh, selfie stick and stuck it. <laughs> up and um, that's how I created my first videos. So if you have a phone that has a camera that is good enough to get started, you're not going to build a business because you have the best camera. You're going to build a good business or a great business because you're delivering value to an audience. So first just start by using what you've got. The next thing that I did is that I started watching YouTube with a more critical eye instead of watching for enjoyment um, only or entertainment. I started kind of being a little bit more analytical about the YouTubers I was watching and even more uh, like critical of the videos that caught my attention but then lost my attention quickly. And I noticed that the people who took like 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes to get to the point of their video, they just lost me. So um, if you're going to start any type of video content, get to the point of your video within 10 seconds of the video starting. Um, you, the, the people who clicked on your video clicked on it because the title and the thumbnail were an answer to a question that they had or were something that intrigued them. And if they click on the video and you don't address that right away, then they're gonna say, oh, this person's taking forever and they're just gonna tap out. So you're gonna lose them and they're probably never going to want to watch another one of your videos. However, if you get to the point of the video within 10 seconds, what happens is that their hand comes off the mouse if they're on a computer or their thumb relaxes so they're not going to go to like the next video and they're going to sit back and watch you. And that happens in the first 10 seconds on YouTube and the first two seconds on Instagram because on Instagram we're just swiping. So get to the point and get to it fast. Along with that, I learned that in the beginning, nobody cares who you are. If you don't have like an audience already, um, people don't care what, that you're like, hey guys, welcome. I'm so excited that you're like, they don't care. So, um, cut your words in half, whatever you think you have to say, cut that in half and get to the meat of it. Of course, if you're going to add a little bit of personality or a lot of personality or, um, comedy or anything like that, of course, explore that. Like you want to be entertaining and fun. But if you're rambling, like, 
you're gonna lose them. Nobody cares about all the stuff that you think you want to say, as harsh as that sounds. Um, people just care for you to answer their question or entertain them um, based on what your title and your thumbnail were. I did not mean to spend so much time on number two, but like it is so important because if you lose people, they're lost. And if you gain people, they'll come back. So like that's gonna be the bread and butter of your business. Okay, so let's go to number three. And number three is don't wait till the summer or the winter break or the whatever break, the spring break to start. Start now. Like right now, start, start today. Um, so many of the teacher friends that I have are waiting for some imaginary time in the future while the, while they're, where they will have that space and time to do it and that's not how this works. Like, if you have, if you can make time to shower, if you can make time to brush your teeth and if you really want this, because so many people think they want it, but they don't act on it. So to me it tells me they don't want it. If you really want this, you're going to make it happen and that's it. Step four was that I stopped watching TV, stopped watching movies, and I cut my social time almost completely out of my schedule. And that is something that I did. I'm not telling you that you have to do it, but man, did that help a lot because now I had all of this crazy amount of time that I didn't know I was wasting like on TV and even on YouTube um, to dedicate to my business. Another really random one is um, I reduced the amount of things that I had. I watched the Minimalists documentary and I didn't become like a minimalist myself, but I did eliminate a lot of clutter from my home and it made me realize how much time I was spending on cleaning my home. And so once I wasn't just constantly cleaning and organizing, I had more time for my business. So um, if you can cut down, like I did, I completely cut out TV. And instead, what I started doing was I was putting in audiobooks about business and about finance. Um, that helped a ton because now I had space for my business. This is a really random one, but step five is that I started learning how to manage my finances. I was terrible at managing my finances. I was one of those people that like I would start a savings account and then something would happen and it would just like leap. Like, I could never hold down a savings. I was the kind of person who, like, when they got paid, they spent a little more because I had just gotten paid. And then near the end of the month, I was like, I hope nothing happens to my car or something because I cannot handle an emergency. Um, I was terrible with finances and, like, I was embarrassed by it too. And I started listening to books, audiobooks about finances and watching the Dave Ramsey show on YouTube and listening to the books and everything. And I finally got like a hold of my finances. Like it is a skill. It isn't like you need more money to be good at like managing your finances. You don't. Um, it's just discipline. And I was really embarrassed about it, you know. But anyway, that was the random one. Okay, the sixth step that I took to build my business is that I focused on one platform like all in first before building another one. I've noticed some people, they try to build all of their platforms at the same time. And it just seems like, it seems like a good idea, but it also seems like they don't, like, like none of them really grow that well you know so what i did was i focused on youtube like all in yeah i had the instagram account and i would post here and there but i put like all of my eggs on the youtube basket and then once i had like a really nice youtube following i did a giveaway telling people to go follow me on instagram so i used youtube to build the instagram and once i had the instagram account built like then i could work on both you know because like I knew how to grow my YouTube and so then I, I could continue doing that and then I also worked on the Instagram. So build one platform first, use that platform to build the next one and then build the next one and then you can manage several platforms at a time but um, work, focus on one first. 
once you can monetize your channel, you're, you'll start seeing an income come in. And then you'll also have the opportunity to work with certain brands and stuff. So I can do another video talking about that, like how to work with brands or the different like streams of income. Um, but anyway, once I started seeing income coming in from this online business, I, I changed my job from a full-time job to a part-time job so that I could focus more time and energy on my online business. So I definitely recommend that. Like keep your full-time job, don't quit just because you're motivated and inspired, especially if you don't have an emergency fund. Keep your job now and use like extra tidbits of time here and there to build your business and once you start seeing income from it, reduce the hours at your current job or switch to a new job that allows you to work part time. And then with that extra time that you have to invest on your online business, you can really grow your income. And speaking of income, so you have your full time job right now, right? And let's say that you start your online job. Um, don't spend the money that you're earning from that, that you start earning from your online job. Save it all or invest it. Pretend it's not there if you're gonna save it. Just leave it alone. It would be really nice if you set a goal like, oh, if I'm consistent with this for six months and I produce X amount of videos, then I'll buy a camera or something like that. Um, it just works so well to let the business pay for its own new expenses. The first cam, once I bought like a camera camera, I went to a Goodwill um, and bought a used camera, but it had the flip screen and it was a Sony camera and I just felt like so much pride that I had earned, like that I had earned the money to buy that camera from the business itself that it wasn't coming out of like out of pocket. Um, so that was definitely a milestone that I would recommend, highly recommend to you. The next thing that I did is that I wrote down the goals that I had, but not like, oh, I want to have 100,000 subscribers. No, it was actually smaller goals, um, like for example, 10,000 subscribers, and I broke that down by 500s, and I just put like 500, 1,000, 1,500, like that, all the way to 10,000, and any time I hit the mark, I would highlight it, and just seeing myself grow, and knowing like, oh, tomorrow I get to highlight because I, at the rate I'm growing, like, you know, it's only a matter of hours before I meet the next threshold. That helped so much. And I put that little like chart um, on my wall right behind my laptop where I worked. So I was constantly looking at the goals that I had and that made a big difference. Okay, so I wasn't earning a whole lot as a teacher when I was like working. Um, I'll share the income that I was making like after taxes and deductions and everything every, basically everyone getting a cut of my <laughs> check I was taking home about three thousand dollars a month and um, I had decided that once I was making twenty five hundred from my online job that I would let go of this one and yeah there was a like five hundred dollar gap to fill but I thought like okay once it's twenty five hundred like it's pretty safe for me to like quit and just leap, you know? Um, so I did just that. I, I didn't quit, but I didn't renew my contract for the next year. So when June came around, it was the end of the school year and I just said like, I'm not coming back. And then I had July and August to increase my income so that by September I would be like making the same as I would have had I stayed working. And I was so scared that I wasn't gonna meet the mark that I worked harder. And I think that first month I made like, in September, I made like 3,200. So it was more than I thought I could make um, just because I was scared and trying really hard. So I wouldn't say that you need to make the same amount, but you need to be close enough that if you didn't, it's not like you'd get evicted from your home or something like that. Um, definitely think about all of the bills that you have to pay and all of your 
financial goals and be smart about it. Um, look, I'm all about being a dreamer and an optimist and like manifesting things in your life. And, and I'm all about that, but I'm also, um, I, I try to keep my feet planted on the ground. We have that in Spanish, like tener los pies en la tierra. And, you know, I wasn't being like, a, I'm going to make $10,000 from this. Like, no, like be real with yourself. Um, and if you have responsibilities like children or family or anything like that, like make sure that you think about them too. And it's not just like this like magical, like romanticized dream that you have. Um, I'm not trying to discourage you. No, wait. Yes, I am. You know what? Yes, I am. I am trying to discourage the people who would just quit. Because if you quit it easily, this is not for you. So, yeah. Yeah, if you quit, quit easily. If you get discouraged easily, if you're the kind of person who doesn't get back up when life kicks you down, this is, this is not for you. I'm making this video with teachers in mind. And if you're a teacher watching this, you already know how to teach students. So the best thing that you can do if you're going to do this is when you're talking to the camera, talk exactly the same way that you do as when you're in the classroom. Something that like the viewers of this channel love is that I'll be teaching a chord or something on the ukulele and I'll say, look up. And people are like, how does she know when I'm looking down? And it's because I really do envision myself in a classroom with my students when I'm teaching. I leave the pauses. I leave little mistakes that I, I make because in a normal classroom, that's all part of the learning. And so when I'm looking at here at the lens, I'm not really looking at the lens in my mind. I'm in the classroom looking at my students. And so I, I know when they're looking down because they're like fixing their hands or looking for something. And so I'll say, look up so I can show you. Um, you can do the same thing. You can envision yourself in the classroom when you're delivering instruction across the camera. And that's going to be so valuable for your audience because they're going to have this feeling that it's like a very authentic learning experience and they're going to want to come back to you because it feels real and that is so important. Now, I want to wrap up all of this with a nice little golden bow to say one of the business audiobooks that I listened to talked about how most businesses fail in the first five years, but of the businesses who make it past the five years, most of them thrive. And so in my mind, I decided I was going to do this job, this online job, for five years without expecting results because I knew that if I made it past the five year hump, then I would definitely have a successful business. And so I just decided that, like, I'm gonna do this without expecting anything in return for five years. And that's the level of commitment that I went into this with. Um, Thankfully, it took, I think, two years to see uh, like a return and to see the channel really grow. Uh, it was two years and two months for me to hit the 100,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube. But my mind was like in it for sure. So if you're expecting to see results within a month or two months or three months, um, your expectations should be reset. I really love people who have grit and tenacity and are go-getters and are hustlers and they just like get back up when life punches them down. And when I see people like this, like I get excited and I just want to like invest in those people. I think that if you're still watching this video right now, you might be one of these people because other people are just like, oh, this is too long and she doesn't make this sound easy, so I'm out. I didn't want to make this sound easy because it's not, it's not easy. However, if you're still here, I'm going to give you one of the secrets that I, I think it's the secret to building an online business that is meaningful, 
and profitable for you. Focus 100% on the person watching your videos. Make every single video that you make for them. Not for yourself. Doesn't matter what camera you have, what microphone you have, how you look, that doesn't matter. If you focus on the person watching, that's all that matters. If a person watching leaves a comment, comment back with your whole heart. Comment back with the intention of building a relationship with that person. Because it's those people who are going to make this possible for you. And without them, none of this is possible. If you would like for me to make a follow-up to this video or the next one in the series, um, I mean, I, I'm not thinking it's a series, but it can turn into a series, let me know down below and I can do that because um, I'm happy to share what I've learned. Like, that's like every teacher, you know? Like, you learn something, you're like, ooh, I want to teach this. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and good luck on this journey. It's not easy, but oh my gosh, is it rewarding.